I have been living overseas for at least 15 years in more than 60 different countries. And while there's certain things that I do miss about my home country of the United States, there's also quite a few things that I don't miss. And as I've been over in Europe for the past couple of months, I've been reflecting a bit on that. And so I want to share with you today some of the things I don't miss so much about the U.S. I think the first thing is not having to drive everywhere. I've had a car since I was learning how to drive when I was 15 or at least had access to a car. And so growing up, I mean, I never took public transportation. I was from a small town in Florida and you had to drive to go everywhere. But once I started traveling internationally, I realized that you don't actually need a car in many countries because the public transportation is so good. And that's certainly the case here in Europe. You don't need to drive. You can take the bus, the metro, the train, and the trains are so good that you can go to different countries without even needing to get on a plane. The bus system is really good as well. And that's just not the case in the US. Like, yes, we do have public transportation, but it's not as good. And the distances are also really far. So we're not gonna get into why the US is designed the way it is and the urban planning, although there are some really good videos on YouTube about that. But if you're outside the city center in a lot of places, then you probably need to have a car or it's really helpful. And so one of the things I don't miss is having to drive everywhere at least you know 20 30 minutes to get somewhere and then having to pay car insurance and gas and everything like that but of course you know i want to rent a car sometimes and i still enjoy driving and i like the freedom that having a car provides and i've always been grateful to have a vehicle since i could drive but i also like having the option of just being able to hop on a bus or a train and go anywhere Another thing related to driving that I don't miss is all of the billboards everywhere in the US. I feel like every highway is just filled with advertising. And you know, I really don't notice it that much in other countries. And I've taken the bus and the train around places in the UK and I haven't seen any. So I don't know if it's against the law or something, but that's just something very characteristic of the US when I go back is that I just notice all of the billboards everywhere. And I actually talked about this in another video of how strange it is to see medical billboards like hospitals advertising their emergency rooms and things like that which you would never see in other countries and um, and hopefully that you won't have to go to the hospital but that kind of practice and mindset in the u.s is very strange to me and when i go back after being abroad for some time it's always one of the first things that i notice and i definitely don't miss it here i feel like you know you can just look out the window and see the nature and see the trees and not be reading advertisements for hours and hours on end kind of along the same lines as the billboards on the side of the road something that i do not miss is being subjected to pharmaceutical commercials every five minutes if i want to watch tv now of course all of us have netflix now and we watch youtube and we watch other things but anytime I wanted to watch normal TV in the US, it's insufferable, the number of pharmaceutical commercials. And it just makes you aware of all kinds of conditions and side effects that you really don't want to know about. And you don't want to think that you have them. And being in other countries, you just forget that pharmaceutical commercials exist. I mean, you see other types of commercials, but it gives me such peace of mind to not have to waste any of my life watching pharmaceutical commercials. I would be happy if I never saw another one of those for the rest of my life. Like if I have a problem, I will go to the doctor. I will figure out what is wrong. I don't need some pharmaceutical companies marketing to me with their super cheesy generic commercials where they're making horrible illnesses seem fun. Like, oh, you can have this bad thing that's happening to you at a picnic. And it's just very weird. Like all of the marketing with pharmaceutical companies is just very strange. 
and it shouldn't be allowed, quite frankly. Um, it, it shouldn't be so profitable. And so I wholeheartedly do not miss pharmaceutical commercials or the sky high price of drugs for that matter. I had to get some paracetamol, which is like a Tylenol, Advil type of painkiller here. It cost 50 cents, 50 cents. I mean, that's how much drugs should cost. They should be affordable for everybody. They should be widely available. Um, you know, if it's something without a prescription and it seems quite simple, but yet in the US that box would probably be six or $8. Another thing that I don't miss about the U.S. is all of the fast food and chain restaurants. I grew up on McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, all of that stuff. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. But I definitely don't miss it. I mean, sure, that was the 80s and 90s, and it was a big thing then. But I, I don't miss having the lack of selection that you can have in a lot of places in the u.s like i lived in north carolina for a couple of years and i felt like all of the restaurant options were mostly fast food and i know it's that way in a lot of america and i really like having so many options here of locally owned restaurants where you don't feel like you just have to eat fast food or commercial national or international chains that are in strip malls the restaurants here can be locally owned you know small mom and pop places and just a lot of privately owned restaurants compared to the big chains and of course those chains are still here as well and they have their own chains here in the uk you've got pret you've got like pizza places and you know, you can find all of that, but you also can find a lot more variety here. And so I have to say, I'm not even missing Chick-fil-A. Sorry, Chick-fil-A, but I feel like I've had plenty of U.S. fast food in my life to uh, hold me over. And so I'm really enjoying eating at nice little cafes and bakeries and restaurants that I've never heard of before because there's only one of them. Something that I don't miss whatsoever are having conversations about politics with everyone or kind of just conversing about the main headlines of the day. That's something that every time I go back to the U.S. it's like this onslaught of political news and even when I go visit family members and friends the first topic of conversation always has to do of, around politics or something bad that happened on the news and every country has a political system and every country has news but for some reason they're able to dilute those topics and balance them out with other things if you're in the u.s and you get bbc channel then you've probably noticed that the programming is a lot different than on cnn and fox news and msnbc and it's just a reminder that there's a lot more to life than following what's going on in politics. I remember when I was a little kid and I didn't know what politics meant yet and I would hear adults talking and they'd be like, ah, oh, politics, you know? And so if so many of us have that opinion about it and we know that a lot of it is so fake, it's like we can be informed citizens without having to know about every single scandal and what every single person is doing at all times. and. So I I've just really enjoy and relish in being able to live my life without knowing what everyone is doing over there. And, you know, you can still keep abreast of the news and the headlines from anywhere in the world. You just don't have to have it in your face 24 seven. Another thing that I don't miss about the US is the fast pace of life, like that rat race feeling that you get, depending on where you live, of course. I just got back from New York and it was a bit of a reverse culture shock when I got back. I made a video for you about that, but coming back here to England, it's just so peaceful and relaxing and granted, I'm not in London, but whereas in the US, I sometimes get this feeling that I'm not doing enough. Like you can kind of feel guilty for relaxing sometimes, but here, like I feel guilty for not relaxing. <laughs> like I'll see so many examples of people relaxing and having an enjoyable day that it makes me feel almost guilty for working. It's kind of the opposite. 
then people still work and have normal lives and jobs and get things done. It's just the energy is just different and it's just so much more peaceful. And of course there's peaceful parts of every country, but uh, I felt this on and off for decades. I remember when I first moved to Costa Rica when I was 20 years old, that is something that really stood out to me was that people just had a lot more leisure time and seemed to enjoy life and like a leisurely pace of life more and I guess that's why they call it Pura Vida, you know, the pure life. But as I was going back and forth between Costa Rica and the US, I would notice it a lot more. When I went back to the US to finish my university and also go to grad school and then moved back to Costa Rica, I think that's when it really hit me because I had just come out of business school and I feel like I was brainwashed into you know, going into corporate America. That's what business school is for. And then going back to Costa Rica and doing the opposite of what all of my classmates were doing, at first I kind of felt guilty for not you know, taking a full-time job back in the U.S., but then uh, once I was in Costa Rica and kind of started to ease into that kind of lifestyle, I just really loved it and I really haven't gone back since. A sort of random thing that I don't miss about the U.S. is getting so many spam calls. When you go to another country and you swap out your SIM card for a different one, all of a sudden those calls stop. I don't know how many do not call lists I'm on, but they don't really seem to work. And even though I still have my US phone and SIM card, I'm mostly using a UK SIM card on my primary phone. And so I don't have to worry about getting all sorts of spam calls and voice messages like robo calls and things like that. And it's something that I only notice when I pick up my other phone to check messages. like. When I landed in New York and I swapped back to my US phone, I had 70 spam voicemails and I kind of forgot that that existed. So I definitely don't miss that. And I love only using my phone for the purposes that I like and not having some random scammy companies intruding on my privacy. And then a big one has to be the cost of living. And this is something that has not changed since the first time I moved abroad in 2002. So 21 years ago, I remember getting to Costa Rica and being shocked at how inexpensive everything was. Now the prices have gone up there quite a bit in recent years, but it was the same when I went to Australia. I can remember telling my parents and my friends that I was spending, that guy is going fast. I was spending about half of what I was spending to be a student at the University of Central Florida. My rent was half the price, my food bill was half the price, and I was living in a beachfront apartment in a town called Miami Beach, not Miami, Florida, but Miami, Australia, just up the road from uh, Burley Heads. And I was just shocked, you know, 20 years old, living on half the cost of a crappy student dorm, and I felt like there was this big secret that no one had told me about. And it's still that way. I, I always spend more when I go back to the US. And even if I travel to an expensive destination like Tokyo or back to Australia, because it has gotten more expensive there now, especially with the uh, exchange rate last time I was there before the pandemic. But there's really nowhere that I go that I spend more than I do living in the US. Sometimes I'll spend the same amount I mean, obviously, if you're staying at super luxurious hotels and things like that, it will be more expensive. Or if you're living in a really expensive country like Iceland or Switzerland, it will definitely cost more. But I've even found in, you know, quote unquote, expensive places like Norway and Finland that the cost of living is still lower than it is for me in Florida. So the high cost of living in the U.S. just generally is not something that I miss and I know that there is inflation and cost of living increase around the world, but it seems particularly noticeable in the United States. 
So what are some things that you don't miss about the US when you go abroad? Let me know in the comments below. And also what are some of the things that you do miss? And maybe I can make a video about that.